Amen. It is so good to see each one of you. Hey, thank you for your faithfulness in giving. Uh, we just so appreciate it. I don't think they have to be that low. Uh, still need to be able to see you. Uh, it's, oh, there we go. There we go. So good. Last week we had, how many were able to attend uh, Brother Yoon when he was here? Able to attend that time? Wasn't that such an amazing time? And um, we received an offering for Back to Jerusalem. It's a big ministry for, uh, the, from China to J Jerusalem, and he explained all about that. But over $8,000 came in. And I just want to thank the Lord. Thank you for your faithfulness. And then we had Brother Steve here last week and just sharing about, Ec or, uh, uh, not Ecuador, but El Salvador, and just the, the ministry. And then people gave on the way out and almost $2,000 came in for that ministry on the way out. I want to thank the Lord for that. So good. And then for missions, uh, just our general support of 28 missionaries, a monthly support, and a couple, I think, um, orphanages that we support. I think 2,500. So there was like over $12,000 that came in this last week for missions around the world. And I want to say thank you. Thank you for responding to the good news and getting the gospel out there. Before I begin this morning, if your cell phone is on, if you could silence that, that will help me a great deal, and um, that'll be wonderful. And if you have a child in here, your child's going to get blessed. If your child is struggling and competing with me, then um, help them to get some rest or whatever they need out there, and then bring them back in and we'll all be good to go. We have lots of families, lots of young families. We have an area for our nursery for children and uh, big children's ministries that is going on right I think we have over 200 kids in our children's ministry. Isn't that amazing what God is doing? So we're so thankful. Today is, uh, uh, we're continuing the series, the series, Serve Well. Serve Well. And um, I'm talking about today, um, the why behind the reason that I would serve. What, what, is, what is the why? What is it in the kingdom? What is it that Jesus would ask us to do? Why, why would I need to serve well? And so when I'm talking about serving well, I'm talking about serving at home, being a blessing at home, and, and having the heart of a servant at home. I'm talking about having this heart of a servant when you go to work. When you go to work, um, because of our love for Jesus and excellence, we're just never late. We show up 15, 10 minutes early because we just believe in excellence. Not as many amens, but that's okay. <laughs> but that's part of serving well. It, it, it's not based on performance, but it's based on God's love, his presence, and influencing people by serving. That's, that's, that's just part of what we do. We serve in our, in our uh, neighborhoods. We serve those that are around us. I serve the people that are close to me. It's it, where I live, everybody mows their lawn. Everybody keeps a really nice yard. Everyone it, it, around me. And so um, when I saw that and I lived there, I just have a beautiful yard. And I spend the extra money for fertilizer and do the things around the neighborhood so that people around are, they're literally served by action, by love and kindness. So, well, you know, I'm just not into mowing. Well, you can just hire somebody. There's lots of people. So far, we're doing good. And I, but here's what I've noticed about serving. Serving is the, say with me, serving is the number one area that the enemy wants to pick off to bring distance between me and Jesus. The proof is that there's more people who know and love Jesus who don't attend a church in the seven cities than there are who attend churches. And most of them attended a church at one time, became offended, quit serving, and now are home. And it's only in a victory for the enemy. And so this morning, I want to equip you powerfully with the, word of, with the word of God. 
with the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. That greater is he who is in me than he that is in the world. Today as I speak, you're going to find freedom. If you've been offended, if you've been hurt, as I'm going through this message, today you're going to get freedom and breakthrough. Every person here, we have prayed for every person here, and no matter where you're at, the Holy Spirit is here to meet you and to minister to you. Yeah, there's no shame, there's no punishment. God's grace and his goodness is here. He's come to set captives free. So right where you're seated, would you just lift your hands up with me? So Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, I declare your goodness and your favor in the balconies and all through this building. Every person, we just lift our hands to you. We open our hearts to your word. Let your word give entrance. May your word have entrance into our heart, into our minds and spirit. We lift up the sword of the word of God. We cut down every lie of the enemy, every work of darkness, Father. We hold up a shield of faith and quench every fiery darts. And Holy Spirit, right now, in Jesus' name, I declare your kingdom to come and your will to be accomplished this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen, amen. Amen. Psalms 100, Pastor Josh read it. I didn't know that he was going to read it, but it says, make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. He is God. It is he who made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures for all generation. You know, there's no, there's in the kingdom and in God's word, there's not a bad generation that God is, doesn't have the capacity to transform. I encourage you, if you've been speaking about a negative about a particular generation, a group, stop that and begin to bless that generation. Begin to declare God's goodness. Begin to declare God's favor. Maybe they didn't do it quite the way that you did it when you were growing up, but you know what? God is a redeeming, gracious God. I remember I grew up during the 60s and the 70s, during the hippie time, and I remember, especially in the church, I I heard preachers say, this is a totally lost generation. God will have to start over with the next one. And what happens? We have a Jesus movement. We have a Jesus movement. Jesus moves and everything changes. And now we have hippie pastors and pastor's wives all over the world proclaiming the gospel powerful men and women of God. Yeah, because God brings a redemptive hope. Amen? (laughs) I think we all face the temptation to live life focused on ourselves and our own immediate needs. To live from surviving rather than 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 thriving. It's easy to become overwhelmed in life and live a life from fear rather than from faith. The more we can, this morning we're going to continue this service, Serve Well, the series Serve Well. And just days before Jesus would go to the cross and die for us, John the Apostle in the, in the Gospel of John records from John 13, John 14, John 15, 16, 17, and then 18. That was that period, even though it might take longer to read that part in Scripture, that period was about a week and a half. It's right before Jesus would go to the cross. And the words that Jesus says in John 13 and John 14 and John 15 and John 16 and John, when he prays in John 17, is just before he goes to the cross. Those words are his last words here on earth in his fully God and fully man body. And he's equipping his disciples to be powerful. And in John 15, Verses 1 through 17, I want to read this passage. If you have your Bibles, you can go on. It'll be up on the screen. And it says this. I am the true grapevine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't bear fruit or produce fruit. And he prunes the branches that do bear fruit, so they will produce even more. You have already been pruned and purified by the message I have given you. 
Remain in it, me and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine. And you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. I want you to repeat that with me. Just verse 4. Remain in me and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine. And you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Amen. Yes, I am the vine and you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. Woo hoo! What an amazing promise. How many want to be fruitful? How many want a life of fruitfulness? Yuck, only parts of us. How many want a life of fruitfulness? Raise both hands, yeah. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Those who remain in me and I in them, I will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Would you say that with me aloud? Apart from me, you can do nothing. So how much can you do apart from Jesus? How much is nothing? Okay. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you will ask anything, say anything, anything you want, and it will be granted. When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. This brings what? Great glory to my Father. I have loved you even as the Father has loved you. Remain in my love. When you obey my commandments, not if. Let's all say when. Many people like live with the preposition of if. Well, if I feel like it. Man, I'm sure thinking about it. I'm I'm considering it. But Jesus said, when you obey my commandments, you you remain in my love just as I obeyed my Father's commandments and remained in his love. I have told you these things so that you will be what? Full of sorrow. Heavy, heavy religious spirit. Walking around gloomy and doomy. What does the scripture say? I have told you these things so you would be filled with what? Filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. That's the mark of believers, of disciples, of Christ followers. We are laughing, happy, joyful people. Woohoo! Oh, thank you, Jesus. This is my commandment. Oh, I should, I have a funny story to tell you. But it would take too long. This is my commandment, love each other in the same way I love you. There's no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friend. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you slaves but a, because a master doesn't confide in his slaves. Now you are my friends since I have told you everything the Father told me. You didn't choose me. Let's all say that. Yeah, you didn't choose me. I chose you. Yeah, so I didn't choose God, not first. God chose me, actually before the foundations of the world. It shows the level of his love and his goodness in my life. I appointed you to go and produce lasting fruit. Say lasting fruit. How many know that Natural fruit, does, natural fruit doesn't last long. Take a bite of an apple, you leave it out, and it's brown in no time. Isn't that true, Marty? Come on. You didn't choose me, I chose you, and I appointed you to go and produce lasting fruit so that the Father will give you whatever you ask for using my name. This is my command, love each other. So we're talking about people 
reproducing and loving people, lasting fruit are the lives of people being transformed. This is my command, love each other. So here's my big idea. My big idea is this, the secret in serving well is staying well connected. The secret of serving well, to serve well, I need to, be, I need to stay connected to Jesus. It's life in Christ. Jesus is the source. So what I mean by this, well-connected, is it's firmly attached or in close fellowship with Jesus. Proximity really matters to be fruitful. So I think the first why, the the first why, why do I serve? Why am I involved in Christ's kingdom? Why do I love and know Jesus? What What is a foundational piece that I need to have so that I can serve God all my life? The first one is, I serve well when we stay connected to Jesus. So the first one, I'll never do well if I don't stay connected to Jesus. Jesus is my life source. So well, see, there's a lot of people who know about him, but they don't know him. When it gets down, and, and you say, well, pastor, that's kind of judgy. Well, you just go by the fruit. Jesus said, just look at the fruit. And looking at the fruit, you can see who are connected and who are disconnected. You can tell by the fruit. I have a, um, oh, probably now 10 years ago, up in, I went up to Granger, up in that area, and I bought 40 uh, grapevines, uh, just shoots, and I planted all 40 of them. I put them in the same soil. I did a whole bunch of work and got them ready to go. And out of the 40, 37, I have 37 of them still. And uh, two, three of them died. And, uh, but the other 37 just took off and grew. And, and I'm a pastor. And I'm, I'm not a farmer. And so I saw stuff on the internet and got ideas. And then I just had ideas of my own. How to connect the fruit. And so I set up my vineyards and I put uh, up the, the poles and I ran the line, I ran wire. So thought that'd be sturdy. And then when the vines started growing, I would take the vines and I would, as they were starting out, I took wire and I attached wire to the vines and I would wire them in. Well, for a while, it's good. They're just growing, but over time, the vines would grow, and then I would look and I go, "Man, what is the problem? This vine is getting choked. It's getting choked out." And I went out and looked, and I went, "Oh, I've got to undo my wire." The, 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 the vine was actually growing into the wire and it was being choked out. Now some of you are looking at me like, well, duh. Well, <laughs> show me your grapevines, <laughs> right? <clears throat> and so I had a person from the church come and said, well, hey, Pastor Wes, you're supposed to use ribbon. Ribbon. Can you say ribbon? So they gave me a ribbon and I tied them up And now that these vines just flourish, the cool thing is right today, our vines are just have all kinds of luscious grapes ready to be picked because they're not being choked. Cares of life choke us out. Fear chokes us out. Offenses choke us out. There's things in life that choke us out. But when we get connected to Jesus, he's untying the stuff that chokes us out. I mean, he's letting his life and his presence renew and restore. The living, living vine comes and brings life to us. Can you say hallelujah for that? Yeah, thank you, Jesus. So Jesus is the life source. Jesus said, yes, I am the vine and you are the branches. You remain in me and I I in them and you will produce much fruit. Apart from me, you can't do anything. 
all things are possible to those who believe. The Apostle Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. We are beloved sons and daughters, favorite sons and daughters, called by Jesus in John 15. We're called his friends. But he also calls us to serve. When I see myself as a servant of Christ, I stay deeply connected to him. I'm positioned to draw the necessary life, strength, and energy from him for everything that I need to serve those around me. To serve well, it requires connection. There has to be a flow of life. You, people, I, in 38 or 39 years of ministry, I watch people, and, and the people who serve well have this deep fountain of connection to Jesus and his presence and his power. And they just, year in, year out, they serve well. They go through, I've had 39 years of ministry. Can you imagine the harmful things that have been said to me? The harmful things that have been done. Being accosted, the lies that were spread. It had been so easy to go, I don't need this. It had been so easy to say, if this is what the church is like, I don't want to have any part of it. It had been so easy to do that. But when you're connected to Jesus, his love, his presence, his goodness, his grace, his might, his strength, because he's more than enough. He's more than enough, and you can actually bless those who curse you, and you can do good to those who despitefully use you. But what you can't do is be not connected to Jesus. That's what you can't do. What is one of the fastest ways to have connection juice flow through you? If you know how to pray in tongues, do you pray in your prayer language? That is the fastest way to have the life and the presence and the power of God flow through you. And say, well, I don't have that. You know what? There's two people that get you feel right here. I just promise you. Right after service, you come up. (laughs) Here. Here. We got a whole group. I just think, I think we need juice. I think we need the life and the presence of Christ. I think we need everything that God has available to us. I am so seeker sensitive. I just think everybody who's seeking Jesus, I'm sensitive that you get him. That you get all of Jesus that he has for you. He's more than enough. He's more than enough. (laughs) The option in chapter 15 in not being closely connected is not a very good option. When I planted these 40 plants, three of them, as I said, didn't make it. And I've spent now the last nine years trying to keep, trying to bring back to life those three plants. Each each spring I go out there, no, are you kidding? You just go pull them up and spend time with the 37 that are growing. What did Jesus say happens to those that aren't connected? What do they do? They dry up, they wither, and there's no life in them. Now here's what's different in the kingdom of God rather than than an earthly realm. You can be deader than a hammer and the Holy Spirit will come and he'll breathe life and he'll raise your spirit from the dead and bring you back to life. Yes. Yes. I'm just saying, nobody wants to be around the dry twig. You're brittle, snap easy, no fun, waving in the wind. Jesus has life. I've come that you might have life and life more abundantly. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hmm. (laughs) Number two, the reason I serve. I serve knowing that it brings great joy to my heavenly Father. See, rather than serving, trying to get my acclaim from other people for how I serve, I serve because my Father loves 
to see his son serve. It brings him great joy. It brings him great joy. John 15, 8 says, when you produce much fruit, you are my true disciple. This brings great glory to my father. We serve a good, good God who loves us and is for us. His spirit is working in us to produce good fruit. Jesus said it brings great joy to our heavenly father when we serve well. At the heart of serving well is loving your neighbor as yourself. The joy of serving others with love and kindness and being a doer of the word and not a hearer only. Servants in Christ's kingdom serve from God's love and his grace. We serve wholeheartedly and whatever we do, we serve with excellence. We don't serve out of performance or perfectionism. We serve out of excellence. Whatever we do, we want to serve with excellence. We, sh- we ought to be known in the seven cities. If you've hired me out at Hanford, man, that person is an amazing worker. They're there early. They're, the, the government's getting their money's worth. As much as possible. The teachers in the kingdom, they just serve in such an amazing way. They bring the life and the presence of Jesus. When they walk into the room, the students can feel the presence and the goodness of Jesus. Mayors and congressmen, or mayors and, uh, and um, councilmen and people in our city, people that are in government who serve well, love Jesus and know him and walk with him, serve for the benefit of the people. Serve to make people's lives better. And when you do that with a life in the presence of God, it's sustainable. It's sustainable. You say, well, Pastor Wes, dude, seems like a lot of work. Well, here's the deal. You get to heaven, the first words of Jesus are not, well done, good and faithful son. Good and faithful daughter. Not well done, good and faithful friend. They are well done, good and faithful. So those who have just kind of put service on the back burner need to ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, you've designed me to be fruitful. I want gobs and gobs of fruitfulness in my life. Holy Spirit, I want revival. Come and set my heart on fire again. Amen? Amen. Number three, I serve, the third reason, I serve, uh, I serve well rem- remembering the promise of eternal reward. And I just talked about that. I want you to look at Luke 18, verses 29 through 30. 20, verse 29 says, Assuredly, I say to you, there is no one who has left a house or a parent or brothers or wife or children for the, for the sake of the kingdom of God who shall not receive many times more in this present and in, in the age to come. Mark 10, 28, Jesus is speaking. Peter asked Jesus, he said, See, we've left houses and lands. We've left everything to follow you. And Jesus said, Assuredly, I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or fathers or mothers or wives or children or lands for my sake in the gospel who shall not receive a hundredfold in this time. There's no place in the gospel to show taking a vow of poverty. That's a lie from hell. You can't do anything when you're in poverty. That's nothing more than a spiritual pride. You're designed to be blessed emotionally, physically, spiritually. You're designed that your businesses are blessed. You're designed to be, you're designed to be blessed so you can be a blessing. It's right in the word of God. You're designed to bless, to be a blessing. These glasses are all stretched out. You know, I have a big Norwegian head. (laughs) Sorry, Facebook Live. Here we go. Surely I say to you, there is 
There is one, no one who has left houses or brothers or sisters or fathers or mothers or wives or children for the sake, my sake, and the sake of the gospel, who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time houses and, bro- and brothers and sisters, mothers and children and lands and persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. This is an amazing word for all who serve Christ and his promise for eternity. I had a, uh, just an amazing friend, a, a wonderful guy who went to our church over on the west side. He was an incredible carpenter. One of two carpenters that I've known in my lifetime who had speed, they could put and work so quickly and they could, they were always like four or five steps ahead and they, their work, like, he rebuilt our platform, and he was so fast. He told me, he goes, why don't you just go and work on your message? You're going to be in my way. And so I came back out, and he had half of the things done, and, and, and then he wouldn't let us pay anything. came to the church, and he just wanted to, to serve and be a blessing. So as I talked, I thought, you know, actually the labor is worth the hire. We'd love to pay him. We don't want to, I want to dig deeper and find out why is it, that you don't want any help, right? Why is it that you just are willing to serve? And, 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 and I, I was talking with him, and, and he, said, he said, you know what? And he, here's basically what he said. When I, when I get to heaven, all I want is a hug from Jesus. And I don't need a reward. And as spiritual, and whatever as that may sound, and whatever, it's just spiritual pride because it opposes what the scripture says, that we would receive a great reward in this life and the life to come. Don't get caught in spiritual pride and call it humility. What you do is of great worth, of great value. Amen? And when we see Jesus, we'll be like him, for we will see him as he is. And his hug will be amazing. I'm not discounting the hug. I'm just saying he has a reward for you. Yeah, he has a reward. So good. Man, this is good. Josh, we need to get on TV. Come on. I wonder how many here want to serve well, but you've lost close connection with Jesus. The worship team is coming. For some, you'd like, you'd love to serve, but It's the past hurts that are keeping you from serving anymore. You have offenses. I said, you know, the way I was treated, the way things went down. My question today, I'm going to just say this kindly and carefully as much as the Norwegian can. So you've been here for three, four, five, six years. So how long is it going to take for you to heal to get back in? and use your gift. I'm just healing. Dude, if a doctor took that much time, you'd fire him. You're in a life-giving presence of Jesus. The Holy Spirit is here to make you whole and healthy. I can understand a short time, but just like, man, I get my, get my bearings right. I, I'm gonna come down and I just gotta get filled with the presence of God. I gotta get my mind washed up, but month in, month out, Week in, week out, you're in, you're out. And using, I'm just healing. I just say, behold, 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 in Jesus' name. But that's not it. The truth is you're offended. The truth is you're wounded. The truth is you're mad at Jesus and you're mad at his church. And you're using Something that happened that was meant to bring transformation, maturity, to actually create stability and strength and power because that's what obstacles do. Wounds and hurts. I mean, I had trustees as a youth pastor say stuff to me that was so mean. And the Holy Spirit said, you bless them or you won't be in ministry. You bless them or you won't be in ministry. I had had three senior pastors that were so rough to work with. And none of them liked me because I could speak better than them. (laughs) 
mostly true. And I remember being under their ministry and the Holy Spirit says, for you to do what I've called you to do, I want you to love them, submit to them, bless them and do all you can. For the first guy, I got him two or three raises from a church that hadn't given him raises for years and just served to bless him. But the thing that I did, woo, so I watched over my heart. My dad had an emotional breakdown, nervous breakdown, and, and uh, he was in the Harborview Hospital. We were in the Gresham area at the time. And so on my day off, it wasn't during the week time, but on my day off, I would drive up to Seattle, up to Harborview to be with him. And I remember the senior pastor saying to me at the time, he said, I don't want you going up and seeing your dad every week on your day off. He said, uh, there's stuff that you can do around here. And I said, well, then I'm going to give you my resignation. Because on my day off, it's my day off, and I need to be with my dad. Goes, oh, no, 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 I just didn't mean it. He goes, no, forget it. He goes, but don't ever threaten me again. I said, well, then don't ever threaten me again. But in that environment, and the Holy Spirit spoke over to that particular person. He said, I want you to bless him because he doesn't understand grace. But I am shaping in you. If you'll go through these hearts, see, all I'm saying is, no matter who you are, we've all gone through stuff. But the stuff isn't designed to keep you from thriving. The stuff is designed to make you powerful, to make, see, when the, and I've gone, we we're doing a lot of preaching today. The stuff isn't designed to destroy you, it's, desi it's designed to define you as a favorite son and daughter, as a, as a friend and an amazing servant in the kingdom. Would you stand with me? <sighs> Would you lift your hands with me? Hemo no no see on the Hemo no 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 we welcome you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Blow wind of God. Blow wind of God over our people. Refreshing wind. Winds of heaven, let them blow along. No dead wood. No dead wood. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Oh, as we sing, just lift your hands to heaven and let Jesus fill you. The Holy Spirit is here to heal and to mend and restore. So good. Pastor, such a good word about staying connected. It was an amazing word today about staying connected and abiding and remaining. John 15, what's powerful as you read that story is, just a few chapters later, did the disciples remain when Jesus was arrested? No, they all, they all left. And Peter denied Jesus. You know the story, Jesus was crucified, buried, and the disciples, you know where Peter went? He went back to the Sea of Galilee and he's fishing. How many of you know when you don't say connected, you can go back to what, what you were? You can go back to who you were. Some of you here, I just have a word of knowledge. You've picked up things that were of your old self and the Holy Spirit's gonna give you freedom today from what you were. You pick those things up because Jesus is so good that he goes back to the Sea of Galilee and the fishermen are fishing. And he does the same miracle he did to capture their attention the first time. They're fishing and they're not very good at it because they're not getting any fish. He yells at them, he said, throw your nets to the other side and they do and what happens? They capture a, a lot of fish. And what does, P what does Peter do? He jumps out of the boat because he said, I, I want to get connected again. This connection with Jesus is the best thing that ever happened in my life. And I lost it for a moment, but I'm going back. And he jumps in the water and he swims to Jesus. And when he ends up to Jesus, does Jesus sit down with him? Does Jesus sit down with him and say, you dummy? 
You do, would you do that? For, no, what does Jesus do? <laughs> so we need to capture this because you think God wants to punish you. You think God's mad at you? He asks him, do you love me? There's a ministry, ministry of restoration today and I know because this is what happened in my life. In my life, and this is gonna happen in your life. Jesus is asking you, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? And notice he doesn't ask him to serve until he says yes. Do you love me? Yes, feed my sheep. Some of you need to just tell Jesus you love him. And as you do that, he's gonna minister you. So right now, can we get the music to go a little bit and let's just worship the Lord and tell him we love him. Would you just tell Jesus right now, he's asking you, do you love me? Just say yes, Lord, I love you, Lord. I'm swimming to you. I'm leaving that thing today. I'm leaving that thing right now. I'm not picking that anger up, that addiction up, that anxiety up, that heaviness up. That stays here today, and I'm swimming to you. I'm going to you. I'm letting you minister to me. I'm getting connected again, grafted in again, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. If you're here and you don't know Jesus, or you've been far, this is your moment right now. I'm gonna give an invitation for you to accept Jesus. And I'm gonna ask you in a moment to raise your hand if that's you. But if you're here and you need to come back to Jesus or you're giving your life to Jesus for the very first time and you wanna say yes, I want you to just raise your hand right now and say, that's me, that's me. I wanna give you an invitation for salvation today in the balcony up here. Is that you? Raise your hand. That's you, I'm gonna give you a moment. Time to come home, time to return to Jesus. good then praise God very good all right we still got some ministry we want to do for healing so I want to invite the prayer partners up if you're a prayer partner come up here we're gonna pray for healing how many know God loves to heal God loves to heal so if you got something going on physically emotionally spiritually God loves to heal so come receive your healing today in a moment Last service, somebody's knee got miraculously healed. They couldn't bend it, and I saw them running in the front here. So God's healing knees today. So if you have a knee issue, you can walk out different, amen? You can walk out different. So before you go, though, I wanna bless you. So we just hold out your hands. I wanna bless you before you leave. Lord, we bless each person here. Every single one, we bless with the connectedness to your Holy Spirit this week, and that they would bear much fruit. Amen, that you would bear much fruit. We bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Well, have a great week. Thanks so much for being here. If you need prayer, come forward, receive your prayer. If you have a knee issue, come forward, receive your prayer. Find one of our prayer partners.